Chapter 37, The Betrayal of Christ I was carried down to the time when Jesus ate the Passover supper with his disciples. Satan had deceived Judas and led him to think that he was one of Christ's true disciples, but his heart had ever been carnal. He had seen the mighty works of Jesus, he had been with him through his ministry, and had yielded to the overpowering evidence that he was the Messiah. But Judas was close and covetous. He loved money. He complained in anger of the costly ointment poured upon Jesus. Mary loved her Lord. He had forgiven her sins, which were many, and had raised from the dead her much-loved brother, and she felt that nothing was too dear to bestow upon Jesus. The more precious the ointment, the better could she express her gratitude to her Savior by devoting it to him. Judas, as an excuse for his covetousness, urged that the ointment might have been sold and given to the poor. But it was not because he had any care for the poor, for he was selfish, and often appropriated to his own use that which was entrusted to his care to be given unto the poor. Judas had been inattentive to the comfort and even to the wants of Jesus, and to excuse his covetousness he often referred to the poor. This act of generosity on the part of Mary was a most cutting rebuke of his covetous disposition. The way was prepared for Satan's temptation to find a ready reception in the heart of Judas. The priests and rulers of the Jews hated Jesus, but multitudes thronged to listen to his words of wisdom and to witness his mighty works. The people were stirred with the deepest interest and anxiously followed Jesus to hear the instructions of this wonderful teacher. Many of the rulers believed on him, but dared not confess their faith, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. The priests and elders decided that something must be done to draw the attention of the people from Jesus. They feared that all men would believe on him. They could see no safety for themselves. They must lose their position or put Jesus to death. And after they should put him to death, there would still be those who were living monuments of his power. Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead, and they feared that if they should kill Jesus, Lazarus would testify of his mighty power. The people were flocking to see him who was raised from the dead, and the rulers determined to slay Lazarus also and put down the excitement. Then they would turn the people to the traditions and doctrines of men, to tithe mint and rue, and again have influence over them. They agreed to take Jesus when he was alone, for if they should attempt to take him in a crowd, when the minds of the people were all interested in him, they would be stoned. Judas knew how anxious they were to obtain Jesus, and offered to betray him to the chief priests and elders for a few pieces of silver. His love of money led him to agree to betray his Lord into the hands of his bitterest enemies. Satan was working directly through Judas, and in the midst of the impressive scene of the Last Supper, the traitor was devising plans to betray his master. Jesus sorrowfully told his disciples that all of them would be offended because of him that night. But Peter ardently affirmed that although all others should be offended because of him, he would not be offended. Jesus said to Peter, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. I beheld Jesus in the garden with his disciples. In deep sorrow he bade them watch and pray, lest they should enter into temptation. He knew that their faith was to be tried and their hopes disappointed, and that they would need all the strength which they could obtain by close watching and fervent prayer. With strong cries and weeping, Jesus prayed, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. The Son of God prayed in agony. Great drops of blood gathered upon his face and fell to the ground. Angels were hovering over the place, witnessing the scene, but only one was commissioned to go and strengthen the Son of God in his agony. There was no joy in heaven. The angels cast their crowns and harps from them, and with the deepest interest silently watched Jesus. They wished to surround the Son of God, but the commanding angels suffered them not, lest, 
as they should behold his betrayal, they should deliver him, for the plan had been laid, and it must be fulfilled. After Jesus had prayed, he came to his disciples, but they were sleeping. In that dreadful hour, he had not the sympathy and prayers of even his disciples. Peter, who was so zealous a short time before, was heavy with sleep. Jesus reminded him of his positive declarations and said to him, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Three times the Son of God prayed in agony. Then Judas, with his band of armed men, appeared. He approached his master as usual to salute him. The band surrounded Jesus, but there he manifested his divine power as he said, Whom seek ye? I am he. They fell backward to the ground. Jesus made this inquiry that they might witness his power and have evidence that he could deliver himself from their hands if he would. The disciples began to hope as they saw the multitude with their staves and swords fall so quickly. As they arose and again surrounded the Son of God, Peter drew his sword and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off an ear. Jesus bade him put up the sword, saying, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? I saw that as these words were spoken, the countenances of the angels were animated with hope. They wished then and there to surround their commander and disperse that angry mob. But again sadness settled upon them as Jesus added, But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? The hearts of the disciples also sunk in despair and bitter disappointment as Jesus suffered himself to be led away by his enemies. The disciples feared for their own lives, and they all forsook him and fled. Jesus was left alone in the hands of the murderous mob. Oh, what a triumph of Satan then! And what sadness and sorrow with the angels of God! Many companies of holy angels, each with a tall commanding angel at their head, were sent to witness the scene. They were to record every insult and cruelty imposed upon the Son of God, and to register every pang of anguish which Jesus should suffer. For the very men who joined in this dreadful scene are to see it all again in living characters.